Kevin Raposo here with speedyphotographer.com. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to use the generative fill tool in Photoshop. And then I'll be providing you with five clear, actionable examples of how you can actually benefit from this feature as a professional photographer. The examples that I provide in this video will be specifically focusing on real estate photography, where I found that there are several major benefits to real world use. Please remember to subscribe if you find this helpful. And if you're looking for something specific, all of the concepts and times that I'm about to reference are up on screen. So let me start by quickly explaining how to actually access and use the generative fill tool. At the time of filming this video, the generative fill tool is only available to Adobe Creative Cloud users who have the most recent version of Photoshop beta installed. To install it, just open up the Creative Cloud desktop application, select beta apps from the sidebar, and then select install. You may be able to skip this step if the feature is integrated into standard Photoshop in the future. Now, once you open up Photoshop beta, you'll just fire up an image and then use the lasso selection tool or any of the other selection tools to choose the area where you want the generative fill to be applied. You'll see a small toolbar appear directly underneath your image, which includes a generative fill button. Click that button, type in what you want to generate, and then hit the enter key. Now, after a short period of time, Photoshop will generate three different options for you to choose from. Simple as that. Now, I've been doing professional photography for well over a decade, and I have to say that this feature is pretty mind-blowing. You can take a simple thumbnail of a person, something like just a headshot, and then you can generate a complete environment around them in only seconds. It is pretty unprecedented in the photography industry. Now with that explanation out of the way, let me break down the five different examples of how you can actually use the generative fill tool for real estate photography. As a quick disclaimer, I do not advocate using this generative fill tool to manipulate or trick your viewers without making it very clear to them that the image has been modified. Some of the examples that I'm about to show you were pre-approved by the listing agents and they were used almost exclusively as mock-ups so that potential buyers could envision what the place or the space was going to look like. But if you work in a more sensitive field like photojournalism, these types of modifications are strictly prohibited for the sake of editorial integrity, but the ethical purposes of this tool are a larger topic for another video. All right, so jumping into the examples, the first use for this tool is to remove small wires. Now, even when homes are professionally staged, I still find that there are loose wires that are impossible to clean up. Like this shot, for example, where you can see the power cord running along the floor. Now for an extra fee, I usually offer to clean up these details using the clone stamp tool and the content aware fill, but this usually takes me several minutes and several attempts to actually make it look right. Instead, using the generative fill tool, I can easily lasso and select the cable, type in remove the wire, and then in 15 seconds, Photoshop has done a better job than I ever could have done myself. Now, a second use for the generative fill tool is to simulate a finished backyard. Occasionally, listing agents will ask me if I can add a fake pool or fake trees to show what a finished backyard might look like. Now, in the past, I would have to shoot overhead drone shots and then superimpose an image of a flat pool over the backyard on a 2D plane. If I tried to do this using a shot from ground level, it would be almost impossible to match the same perspective without a ton of work. But with the generative fill tool, I can select the entire backyard, type in add a pool with surrounding paint pavement and I have a fake pool with almost zero effort. The perspective is almost perfect and the pool is believable enough. Now, the third use for this tool is to complete renovations. There have been several instances where the seller is rushing a home to market even while renovations on the property are still being completed. I dealt with this during a recent shoot. You can see here that the window trim and the baseboards are missing, but the listing agent just couldn't wait any longer before bringing me in. So I delivered this picture as is, but if I had the generative fill tool, I could have simulated a completed window trim, as you can see here, along with completed baseboards, as you can see here. It isn't perfect, but it looks a heck of a lot better than the original. Now, the fourth use for this tool is to fill an unfinished room. Unfinished rooms tend to be a problem when the listing agent hasn't brought in a professional stager to the property. Stagers will often bring furniture and accessories to fill the rooms and make the place feel like a home. In this shot, I had a large 500 square foot space with a single couch. There was no way for me to make this look good, but with the generative fill tool, I can quickly add a rug on the floor, put up some fake pictures on the wall, and then remove these ugly blankets that were left behind. It isn't perfect, but it can definitely help buyers to envision what the place could look like after they move in. 
The fifth use for this tool is to remove garbage from the environment. This tends to be a big problem for me when I'm shooting exterior shots for properties that don't have a garage. The interior has been professionally staged, but the owner will leave garbage bags and cans and recycling bins outside the home, not realizing that they look terrible in pictures. Now, it isn't my responsibility as the photographer, and I always make that clear to the listing agent, but let's be honest, to keep my clients happy, I usually just deal with it anyway by getting my hands dirty and moving the garbage. But the generative fill tool allows me to completely avoid this problem. I can type in remove garbage cans and Photoshop will magically remove them while still maintaining the complex pattern in the background along with the bushes in the foreground. So those are the five ways that you can use the generative fill tool in a professional photography setting. But this only scratches the surface of what you can do as a real estate photographer. If you're interested in learning more, I also break down a lot of other real estate photography techniques, including sky replacements, proper color balancing, on location shooting techniques, pricing strategies, and more. And you'll find all of it over at speedyphotographer.com, the fastest and ultimate online photography school where you and hundreds of my other students can learn everything about photography in a super condensed and organized 10 day program. Be sure to check it out for yourself. There are dozens of positive reviews about my teaching style. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.